everyone. This is Vishal from Equity Guru, and let's talk about the big IPO, which is uh, you know moving the markets. But that's what financial media is saying. Uh, the uh, there's like three major IPOs this month, and you know you have your first one here with chip designer Arm, um, and uh, Arm is a UK-based chip company which provides chip designs to a range of semiconductor manufacturers, including the processor designs used in basically every current smartphone. And people need to realize ARM does not manufacture chips, right? It's chip designs. Uh, but its customers include Apple, um, Samsung, AMD, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, many, many big companies, right? And uh, from the data that I've seen, ARM gets like around 63% of its revenue from royalties and 37% from its, uh, from its uh, licenses. So big story today was this, uh, you know, ARM uh, IPO. The uh, ARM IPO was priced, you know, 95.5 million shares at around $51 per share, which was the higher uh, limit of the range, which was expected between 47 to 51. But the opening price actually came in 10% above uh, the IPO price with the stock opening up at $56 and where's the open there? $56 and 21 cents. And you can see here, this is the first daily candle of uh, ARM Holdings. And yes, you can see post-market uh, that ARM is still up. It closed at $63 and 57 cents, uh, close $63 and 59, just to be exact there up on the top of my chart there, you can see the key, which will close. Um, and the market right now, post-market is trading at $65 and uh, 10 cents. So it'll be quite interesting to see if the momentum will continue uh, tomorrow. And I think if that happens, uh, that might be, uh, well, that would be pretty positive for the equity markets as a whole. Again, just indicating that uh, money is running back into stocks, not this idea of fear, you know, the, the risk sentiment is quite positive. Um, and uh, this IPO, you know, a lot of people are quite surprised by this, but Arm, um, if you if you don't know, it's uh, it was basically SoftBank uh, back in 2016, which bought Arm for around 36 billion. Uh, and again, the the public offering was 54.5 billion. Uh, but SoftBank in 2022 actually tried to sell uh, Arm to Nvidia uh, for around 40 billion in cash and stock, but the deal did not go through due to you know regulatory opposition. And currently, with the IPO now, uh, Soft. Bank will still hold or will control around ninety uh, percent of Arm's uh, shares outstanding. Uh, you know, as always with IPOs, there's always people uh, sort of questioning the valuation, especially in uh, the markets we have today. Uh, the valuation is fifty four point five billion. That was the valuation of the IPO before you know the debut price even spiked by ten uh, percent. And uh, it means that ARM's price to earnings multiple would be about 104. Uh, and that's compared to NVIDIA's valuation, which trades at 108 times earnings. Uh, but NVIDIA has, you know, 170% current quarter growth uh, forecast. So there's a lot of articles there talking about uh, this comparison between NVIDIA, which again, you know, makes their own chips versus ARM's, which uh, has chip designs. Um, and this initial valuation of 54 billion comes in 36% higher than what Nvidia was offered or offered to pay for uh, you know ARM back in 2022. Uh, you can talk, you can, you can look at the revenues that they've had in March 2023. It, uh, it was down a bit, um, and uh, a lot of people say it was due to uh, it wasn't a surprise, and it was due to this outsized growth a year earlier when customers accelerated their licensing activity when it appeared that ARM would be acquired by NVIDIA. So a lot of analysts said, hey, don't worry about the current year here. Uh, you know, judge the company based on its three-year average revenue growth, which is around 15%, and it's a better uh, measure of where the growth for ARM uh, is going to be going forward. Uh, but then, you know, you have other uh, analysts here saying it's hard to convince the market to pay a huge premium when you're not growing as a company. Uh, and this was said by the chief executive of research and advisory firm, Futurum Group. Uh, research firm New Constructs said that this stock valuation is based more on SoftBank's self-dealing in private markets to manipulate the valuation higher than the fundamentals of the company. And they also said that we believe investors should avoid this IPO 
as we see very limited upside ahead and there are plenty of other companies in the tech sector that offers investors growth, but at a reasonable uh, valuation. And then again, you know, folks, a lot of people just talking about this valuation, right? That it's badly stretched. This is a tech fund manager uh, with independent solutions, wealth management saying that, you know, you're talking about 20 times trailing annual sales or nearly 100 times trailing profits for the current valuation of the company. And he says it's quite unusually aggressive for a company that showed no growth in its late latest fiscal year. Uh, and uh, this uh, tech fund manager also sees some risk with the company's exposure to China, uh, which accounts for about uh, 25% of uh, our uh, revenue. Okay, so a big debate between you know, if it's evaluated properly or if it's not, but I think a lot of analysts, analysts can agree uh, that the IPO is a big win for SoftBank Group. Uh, you know, Masayoshi Son and all those guys, probably heard of uh, SoftBank, but uh, in recent quarters, uh, their uh, vision fund, venture capital portfolio, hasn't been doing quite well. There's been quite a, a lot of uh, you know, losses. And uh, maybe now this IPO is going to, well, I'm not saying maybe now, but yeah, the IPO definitely uh, did help uh, uh, SoftBank. But the, the question is going forward, and here you can sort of see, uh, you know, the vision fund portfolio and their gains and losses, again, not not the best uh, 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 returns recently. And you've probably heard of SoftBank if you follow any of these tech stocks. Um, but the idea now going forward is, okay, is SoftBank then going to eventually dump some of their shares, you know, just to, just to make some money here? Um, and how would they reduce their position? Generally, SoftBank, you know, they have a long history of slowly and gradually reducing its position in slices. Uh, if it's large investments, and one example is how it gradually reduced its large outsized position in um, Alibaba. But again, folks, you know, I'm just mentioning this. Um, the company, or sorry, the investment firm, uh, SoftBank, has not made any comments about whether they want to sell shares or how long they're going to hold shares. So this is all just speculation on uh, the investors uh, and traders uh, part here. So. Again, you know, from, from a technical approach, uh, we don't really have much to play with here with the daily charts. But if you go down to some of the intraday charts, like say the 15 or the five minute, I mean, 15, you can see that, you know, there's clearly uh, an uptrend here and you have support now around the $60, $50 level. And this is again, folks, this is post market, right? So um, after a big pop here initially, there was a bit of uh, profit taking, I guess you can call it. And then the markets in the last hour and then obviously pre-market or post-market, uh, we broke out above uh, the recent highs here uh, that were printed on the five-minute chart. So the momentum is still strong. And uh, going forward, you know, I think the charts here are going to be more value to day traders. Uh, but you'd be looking at the 6150 zone now. And if you get some sort of retest here, uh, perhaps watch for buyers to enter. But I think, you know, just from a market perspective, if the momentum on this IPO continues to uh, move higher, I think it would mean that you will eventually see this break here in the, uh, the NASDAQ as well and the other uh, equity markets here. So keep an eye out on all these stock market charts, which again, I've just mentioned in a previous video, they are still attempting to break out above major, major resistance levels here. Uh, and you can watch that video because I talk about inflation data and where the bond markets and all that stuff are going. So chip designer arm, uh, here's the intraday chart that we were working with that we provided to our readers on equity.guru. Uh, and, you know, again, just setting you up for a break or a breakout, and that's the way you would play this if you are a day trader. Uh, so that's it for me, folks. Uh, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. And crucially, let me know in the comments below where you guys think arm is going and if the markets are going to continue higher. Is that more to do with ARM IPO or vice versa? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.